I just met my father. How was he? Uh, he was kind of nice. I liked That's him. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Trash Bin. I know what it's called. We're back with Dream Daddy Part 3. Part 3. Uh, <laughs> if I sound a little bit under the weather, I do apologize. I'm kind of getting over a cold right now. Yeah. Cole is getting over a cold. Cole is getting over a cold. All right. Welcome let's back. load up some sad. <laughs> let's load up the sad. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to uh, go to bed. I'm just gonna go to bed. <laughs> I'm white. Have fun with the cameras. What happened to the dance club? Shut up. Well, try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. And don't forget, you have a meeting with the English teacher tomorrow. All right, Mr. Uh, Vegeta. Is, is a power level too much for you? Nah, his power level is only like two. Yep, totally remembered, and I'll be there. Awesome. Night, pops. Just go to bed so I can strangle you. <laughs> Always check the card at the ATM before you swipe. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Hey, baby, show me them dick pics. Uh-huh. Which one's Craig? You're the, that's the brood, bro. Oh. Yeah, that's your bro. Bro! Rise and shine, bro! It's early morning. We still gotta work out. You want to? Come on, I'm Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m. Who does 6 a.m. anymore without realizing it? I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey, bud, here's a dick pic. Still want to get swole on, huh? I'm ready to tear up that track. Hit me up, tear me up, brother. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out, but it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Uh, let's go to the gym. Let's get Sad Dad in some work and shape. Sad dad is the ultimate life form. What do you mean working, kid? That is fair. Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, or, but uh, let's meet in 20. Bro, it is 12.30. I texted you at 6. <sighs> After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw him off my blanket and, hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Please stop stroking our cactus. No! The neighborhood is quiet and serene. It's early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey. Good to see ya, man. You didn't respond, bruh. Should've sent him back. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should've had some uh, coffee before I left. You see my bulge through my pants? Or some cocaine. You ready to kick some butt? Uh... Help? Help. This is it. This is how I die. You haven't even started, bruh. It's alright. <laughs> I'll ease into you. I'll ease you into it. Uh, I'll ease into you easily. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half and it seems like Craig is friends with all of them? He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend it on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmill and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. So, I know we are on treadmills. Yeah. And those over there are ellipticals. Yes. What is all the other stuff? <laughs> they might look a little scary, but I guarantee all of them have only had one dick pic taken on. I watch as a dude in a muscle teeth flexes a muscle. I didn't know even existed on a machine. I think was once used to process grain to grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Uh, praying to some sort of pain god. It's like uh, a religious self-flagellation meant to atone for one's sins. Oh, is it the blonde guy? <laughs> You're actually not far off from the truth? Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. I gotta match him. 
I need my dick as big as his. That's impossible, bro. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? The buff. A couple of years, bro. Uh, and what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, I coach my twin softball team. They don't appreciate that still dick counts as both dadding and buffing. Ah, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Uh, I try to live my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song <laughs> as possible. <laughs> the goal is to live with a few worries as I can muster. The lost shaker of salt was a metaphor. A metaphor about what? About not being able to shake salt onto something. Bro, you hit me real hard, bro! We're jogging now. In oh, God. We're jogging. We're jo huh. jogging huh. in the room. <laughs> yeah, we're jogging on the treadmill. No, I, I just imagine they're running around the room. Okay. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Bro, this, this is just walking around the gym. Uh, um, hey, uh, remember when the uh, fish died in college? Uh, 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 no! I don't like this story! <coughs> oh my god, he's really bumping up this beating. I guess I better do it again. Oh, he's fast. This is very, very fast. We were at that party. You vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction, so of course I do a sick keg stand and get all the boys' attention. And then I. Uh, I try to steal fish from the fish uh, party with my bare hands. I can hear it. And then you drop the fish and you flop it and you pay and so you run and then the post cake stand and then die and the semen and the dirty fish is all over your hands and you scooped off the ground and then you're yelling at me and then you had to leave. So we're running out of frat parties with fish and trying to get it, give it mouth to mouth resuscitation and we get him home and get him into the bowl of water and but the prognosis is grim. And the next day, he's uh, alive and well. They never did catch the great <coughs> fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never well. Well, they'll probably catch you. <laughs> Shut up! I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Your dick's out. Uh, I'm so hard right now. Craig offers me a hand job and looks me over for injuries. Eh. All right, I'm back to 100%. That was quick. I'm fantastic. <laughs> I managed to stand up and rub one out again. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will. It's you don't wrong. have to push yourself like that. I always know your limits. Well, I think I might call it a bit here. Uh, you sure? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, here I brought this for you. I bought <coughs> this for you. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be appreciate distaste, apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bruh. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. Good for you. It's my special recipe, and I'm pretty proud of it. It's just nothing but cocaine, isn't it? Cocaine and semen. Okay. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we could try running around the neighborhood. The treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. <laughs> go on. Well, I'm going to go put some ice on the, on everything. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you around, okay? Send me pics, bro. It's raw. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from pizza place across the street from our dorm and now he can run circles around me literally man i really gotta work on this dad bod perfect bro i get home and lie down on the couch it hurts to move oh god i'm so old oh no i must have fallen asleep what time is it shoot it's 3 55 i'm supposed to be at amanda's school in five minutes i frantically put on some clean clothes apply a generous amount of makeup and run out the door you need it if the police are driving behind you, don't... Aw. Shoot him. Shoot him with a gun. <laughs> oh, no. And now YouTube's going to take this down because we're inciting police violence. Dab. I arrive at Amanda's school with a bunch of shooters and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. 
I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, it's room 103 or 108. I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegeta's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vegeta. That's not his name. Do I have to? If you're trying the exit. Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Fine, up those stairs. And then to the left, we can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vegeta's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk you sent me on a wild goose chase. Okay. I get back and where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Fashion, don't you have another parrot to get to? Fine, Mr. Vegeta. Wow! Now. I'm officially ten minutes late, with a boner, and I glare at him as he walks by, walks away. We're not cool. You get me? You must be sad. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the, uh, back? Mr. Vegeta, Lanny <laughs> leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. All right, where were we? Now you can tell me how the unreliability narrator in J.D. Sarlinger's Catcher in the Rye. Um. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Uh. The whole class erupts in laughter. There's no one um. there. All right, all he's right, just, everybody. He's just there, who yeah. sat down, talking to a class, and no one else is there in the room. Yeah, exactly. Just, all right. Stop making fart noises. Okay, I need to leave. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. Now, Olden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the writing and enter the response and questions on page 994 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. You can't tell me what to do. I am going to punch you in the face. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vegeta turns to me and sighs. Mm. Ah! <laughs> Metal schoolers, am I right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> but, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in, me. Oh. No problem, Mr. V v g v g giant v Vegeta? Hmm. Please, call me Ugo. The pit name is Huge Veg. Because <laughs> he's one. He's a carrot. I don't know. He's orange. I don't normally do these impromptu parent teacher meetings, but as I'm a w sure you know. Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. You need to tell her to stop bringing flashlights to class. Is that a reference? No. <laughs> I thought this was going somewhere. No! Stop bringing flashlights! I can't see! Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I don't know. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, well, I stole her. And then I raised her to be a You know, you kind of look like her father. Oh, yeah! I'm filled with rage. <laughs> Like I need to turn a car towards you. Uh, she's fine. Fine. She's fine. No issues. This is Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't 
like that? Stay out of my business. Mm. Well, you're her dad, I suppose. You know your daughter better than anyone. Uh, who? I have a daughter? <laughs> See, if you can talk to her about it, I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. I I know how important art school is to her. And I wouldn't I, I wouldn't hate to see her miss out on scholarships money, because she doesn't deserve it. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. That's her name, right? And he died. And yeah, it is. On our way out, I stopped, thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Bitch. <laughs> yes? You're a bitch. Yes. They automatically love. You can't stop the yes, huge baby. Yes, I am a... <laughs> yes, I am. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Where'd you put him? Um, well, you see, his head... It, it kind of, uh... How does one say it, uh... We need a jambalaya one night, okay? Well, back to the game. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the carpool, and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, do you have any fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vegeta, who's a bitch! And I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. Just talked about Mario Vitale and the whole time? I don't even know who that is. I don't either. Wait, I'm gonna Google it. No. Yep, too no. late. You're gonna edit this all out. No, I won't, delete it. I wanna see who it is. I wanna see who Mario. this is. It's Mario. me, a Mario. Vitale. Vitale. I'm sure I spelled that I wrong. I don't even know if I said his name right. Mario Vitale. He's a guy, he did things pretty hot. Oh, no. I'm going to edit in his face. Oh, God. he looks like a... Sad dad. Yeah! Oh! Oh! It's, it's sad dad. <laughs> I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? <coughs> sure thing. And I'm totally not going to talk to you about some very important stuff that your teacher has been telling me, because I don't care. Telling you about what he did? I don't care. Don't touch that kid. Can I just say the kid with the lunch lady one voice? last time? I don't care. Let's get some food. That that kid with the lunch lady voice has been having serious problems since Vega touched him. One more time. Okay. I'm going to say this, and if you say it again, you're getting out of the car. I I can be free? Oh no. You're still gonna be going with me to get food, just dragged along. Oh no. I don't care. I just realized what voice I'm doing. What voice are you doing? I was in Burma with your father. Okay, uh... And we were in charge of giving <laughs> these massive rupees as a peace offering to a normal tribe. A thief steals it. And one day, I notice a child playing with a ruby the size of a tangerine. The thief had given them away. I think I would hold them. Because some men are looking for reason. Some men just want to watch them burn. 